The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. I'm Father Mike Dandaran, the pastor at Holy Trinity Parish in Assumption, Ohio. And right behind me, the most significant event of your life takes place each day here and every weekend. We're about to journey for six weeks into fellowship, into getting deeper into the scripture of the upcoming Sunday, as well as studying and discussing parts of the holy sacrifice of the Mass so that each time we gather, we get more out of the Mass. You know, uh, we see it surrounding us, don't we? People love to worship. They worship all kinds of things and people, right? They worship great athletes. They worship movie stars. They worship people who have made great accomplishments and win the world of business. And those people have a following, don't they? People follow them and, and, and track them and, and seek out those concerts or those venues in which they can go before their superstar and give that superstar honor and in some regard worship. So we're going to worship. The question today is, whom are we worshiping and what can they provide us? Our experience with the small groups has been positive and a blessing. Uh, this is our third time hosting and I definitely can say that we have benefited uh, from this by getting to know other parishioners in a, in a much deeper way, um, by being intentional to meet and talk about the gospel, to talk about Jesus, and to prepare with one another uh, to, to, to attend the Mass uh, and be better prepared for it on Sunday. Uh, so our topic uh, this week is um, Worthy of Worship Spring Training for Heaven. Our understanding of heaven is the eternal experience of being united with angels and saints in the act of continuous worship to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So this means we don't have to wait until we go to heaven to live this extraordinary experience, to be in the presence of God, and to be around the choirs of angels and saints praising Him. Because in every Mass, that's what we do. This is why we believe that the Mass is a wedding feast, where the groom Jesus comes to meet his bride as the church, and we become one with him. And it is through our personal relationship with Christ that our hearts desire to come to Mass and worship together. And this is only a slice of what we will be doing for all eternity. So, this is why if I could go to daily Mass, I would, if I could. If we can keep this in mind, in those times when we might feel like we don't want to go to Mass because it's boring, it's too long, we don't like the music, uh, etc., whatever reason, God still made himself present. And this alone is worth it. And if we truly desire to go to heaven, let's start practicing in every mess. That's boring. <laughs> that was the response of one of my high school students when I was teaching, when they asked the question, what will we be doing in heaven? I think that somehow when we think of heaven, we think of all the various activities that happen in heaven. All those various activities that give us all this joy in life, somehow we think that's going to be happening in heaven. You know, maybe for someone it's the idea that it's a perpetual game of golf because that gives me joy on earth, therefore I must be getting that joy in heaven. Or for maybe a high school student, it's the constant playing of a video game. So when I told the students what happens in heaven is worship. Worshiping God. Continuously, united with all the saints and the angels, giving worship to God. And the students said, well, that sounds boring. That student, I guess, isn't ready for the experience of heaven. 
But how do we get ready for that? I want to propose to you that when we gather for the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass each and every week, we gather as if it's almost like spring training for the majors. Because when we gather for the Mass, and we said this in previous sessions, we're gathering with the communion of saints. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it doesn't matter how full the pews are, this church is packed. It's a standing room only moment because all the saints and all the angels, they gather with us in the mass to unite themselves with us as we unite ourselves with them to do what? To give worship to the Lamb upon the throne. The book of Revelation provides for us a beautiful image of the activity of heaven. And that activity of heaven, worshiping God, provides for us the deepest joy that no golf game could ever match, that no, that no video game could ever compare with. The joy that we experience in heaven is more profound than anything on earth because the joy comes from the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to whom we give worship. Now, if somebody says, well, that sounds boring, I suspect they may sound, say, you know what? I think the Mass is boring, too. I've had more than one high school student tell me that as well. Well, I propose to them that reality is Mass and worship of God is not boring. But maybe the person who says that fails to understand the great event that's taking place. And because they don't understand the great event, the, the, the nuances of that event, they find it boring. So the more you know of the worship, the more you'll be compelled to do it. It's a great example of like going to a, I used to go to BGSU's hockey games because I was a chaplain there at the university parish. And hockey at BGSU is a big deal. Never saw a hockey game match in my entire life prior to this. But I go because everybody goes. And when I'm there, people are on their feet. They're standing, they're yelling, they're banging on the glass. And for the first period, I'm kind of like into it. I like the idea of people standing. I'm standing with them, and I'm cheering. And they're, they're cheering, I'm cheering. I'm not sure what I'm cheering for, but they're doing it around me. Well, it got a little old. Second, third, fourth period. I don't even know how many periods there are. I got bored. I sat down. I couldn't figure out what all the fuss was. I left saying the game was boring. Clearly, the thousands that gathered with me said it wasn't boring. I failed to understand the nuances of the game, and therefore, I couldn't engage it. My friends in Christ, when we gather for the Mass, we're gathering for a foreshadowing of the worship that will take place in heaven. And if we can study the Mass and understand the nuances of it, we will engage it as worship. It's designed for that. Look at the parts of the Mass. You know, in the beginning, we unite our voices with the songs of the angels. We cry out, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. We're giving the same glory to God that the angels gave in Bethlehem when they announced the incarnation, the birth of Jesus. We cry out, uniting our voices with the angels and the saints as we say, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth is full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. My friends, that's worship. That's a foreshadowing of what we'll do in heaven. We've got to understand the nuances of the Mass because it will help us understand the worship that we're giving. And as in heaven, so on earth. If we think heaven and the worship of the eternal God, the Lamb upon the throne, is boring, we're not ready for our day of judgment. Allow our participation, our full, active, and conscious engagement 
of the holy sacrifice of the Mass to be our spring training for the eternal, the eternal gift of worship in heaven. As you discuss this in your small groups, I invite you to talk amongst yourselves about the parts of the Mass that help you engage in the act of worship. What's your favorite parts? Maybe what parts seem to distract you and not engage you? What could be done differently as you pray the Mass so that you understand the beauty and the significance of it? Thank you for joining me. I look forward to gathering with you next week for our fifth session on this summer session of getting more out of the Mass. Until then, I'll see you in church. Thank you.